Pop Astro Live on a Thursday night. How are you? Let us play the countdown music and let a few people join the live stream and then we will be back full throttle. Are we ready? I hope so. Good evening, popular astronomers. Nice to see the viewing figures already whopping straight up through the roof into the sky. Oh my gosh, honestly, the sun has sort of started shining on me. I'm wearing a lot of synthetic fabric right now. Let's open the window a little bit. It's a lovely evening out there. At least it certainly is on Anglesey. I am in half moon effect right now. You can see my Terminator. Um, that will be relevant shortly, actually. But in the meanwhile, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug. This is a beautiful Pop Astro mug, and we've got loads of different ones in the Pop Astro shop, along with lots of other exciting merch. Now, one of the things that I'm two timing my Pop Astro. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Let's get rid of that banner. Um, do do. Here we go. Look. Normally, I'm wearing my Annalema necklace. Oh dear, this is how this is how you get in trouble with garroting yourself. That's my beautiful Annalema necklace from the Pop Astro Shop. This is the path that the midday sun takes throughout the sky uh, throughout the year. But I'm two timing it with another necklace tonight, and I look like a kind of um, sci-fi Jimi Hendrix tonight with this heart and this headband on. There's a reason I'm wearing the heart. Mary McIntyre made it and sent it to me. Look how beautiful that is. And if you don't know who Mary McIntyre is, well, she is a wonderful SPA devotee and highly astronomical lady. And also exceptionally, exquisitely talented in the jewellery and lunar sketching departments. Multi, multi-talented lady. So I'll keep that close to my heart because we're kind of still in lockdown, really. And little trinkets and things help me stay close to my friends. So... Uh, let's see who we've got on the evening. Uh, all, all these runaway comments already. Um, hi, David. How are you today? Hi. Liam is the bestest. Who is Colin Pryor? That's a nice comment. Sonia is here. She's got a great presentation coming up. Steve Fractals, the man with the Googleplex faces and counting. So, Please start sharing the video. I should say this right at the start of the video. Um, start sharing the video because the minute you start sharing this video, Facebook and the other social media platforms flag it up as relevant and it helps our algorithm. So hit the share button. And if you've watched this show more than three times, please do consider becoming a member of the SPA. It's only 23 quid a year and you get... Look, I've got a big stack of the back catalogues of all the magazines up there. They're racking up. I'm stuck. Something's... Oh, see, look, I've got my necklace stuck in my headphones. Hang on. Let's... Mary McIntyre is trying to strangle. Oh, no, look. <laughs> ah! Oh, no. You're going to have to cut me out of it. You're going to have to put a towel over my head and cut me out of it. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to do it backwards. It's like a blimmin' puzzle. <laughs> oh, I'm out. I'm free, everybody. No need to call the RSPCA. I am free. So tell us what you have seen in the sky this week, this morning. I saw a stunning, beautiful new moon as I went for my first swim in a couple of weeks. I'll tell you, that sea is cold. We've had a lot of hailstorms here on Anglesey, and I think it's all just melted into the sea and plummeted the temperature. So it was a very cold swim, uh, highlighted, accented by a beautiful, tiny little whistle of a moon high in a bright blue sky with a chilly old wind. Hey, uh, so tell us what you have seen in the sky this week. Um, maybe you saw um, a, a re-entering rocket or an Unasvara arc. If you don't know what one of those is, you're about to find out in about half an hour. So stick around. Morning, moon and clouds. Good. Oh, thank you, Michael. It's lovely to be with you too. Thank you. Hi, Adrian. It's his first time. Where's he gone? Um, where's he gone? 
Adrian, thank you so much. Please join in the chat room. Um, I can see that you're watching us on YouTube there. Facebook is a really great way to watch it because there's lots more activity in the chat room and that's where you can friend people who are in the SPA. But welcome, welcome, welcome. It is wonderful to have you along. Adrian, hailstones, but wonderful. How amazing have the clouds been this past couple of days? Okay, so it's been horrible and cold. And I'm very glad I am not an incubating mother bird on a nest full of little babies at the minute because it's absolutely freezing. But that has led to some incredible cloudscapes, massive anvil heads and immense big clouds. <laughs> it's been really good. Really clear skies here in books. What's the chance it'll cloud over as it gets dark? I've been viewing a photo of the Cat's Eye Nebula in Draco this week. A nice meow challenge. Um, there we go. Cats like it, Robin, when you slow blink at them. So when you're imaging that nebula, just give it a slow blink. And if the cat's eye nebula gives you a slow blink back, it means it's not going to scratch your leg or your furniture. That is how to deal with them. Rain, rain and rain. Oh, dear. We've had great weather here. A string of sky. Oh, mm. I seen hail, snow and rain. Very good. Thank you for letting me know what you've been watching. Um, okay, so this week on the All Star Crew, we have got one of my absolute favorites, Liam from ISS Above. We're going to be playing a geography quiz. How exciting! Um, we have got Eleni, the human so supernova, with her space news and space weather, and then we've got Sonia with an outstanding presentation about halos and arcs. I am deeply, deeply into them. They're one of my absolute favorite things to see. And over, well, it was about two weeks ago, um, uh, a lady in uh, Florida photographed one of the rarest arcs of all time. And I've written a song about it to commemorate the magnifique occasion. Okay, join in with the chat room. It's the best way to make new friends. It's lovely that we've got so many regulars here intertwining and meshing for when SPA meetings start again. We're all going to know each other. How great is that? We've done the legwork on friendship making. Isn't that great? And Cosmo, he's been jetting off around the solar system or maybe a little bit further. And you've got to guess where he's been to. So I love nights like this because... Mercury is rising and I've blatantly cut and pasted this off the SPA website, but that's great because it is there as a communal resource for all of us. So Mercury, have you ever seen it? It's this tiny, tiny, it's almost like looking down a microscope, a little kind of um, pale kind of creamy dot. It's really hard to spot in the blush of the sunset, but it is there and it's definitely worth persevering. Um, it's the closest planet to the sun and it's in the evening sky right now in the northwest just after sunset. So you'll need a good clear sky and a low horizon to see it. That's great because I live by the seaside. And because the sky is still bright at that time, you'll have to search carefully. Just as you're about to give up, how many times have I given up on Mercury and then gone, there it is, there it is. Um, once you've seen it, it becomes easy to find again. Um, it, here's a tip. If you have a phone app that shows the stars and know which way it's pointing, it's time to use it. It will show you exactly which direction to look in and how high Mercury uh, is above the horizon. But even then, it won't be all that easy. So um, excitement for Mercury. I've probably maybe seen it 10 times in my life. Uh, I saw the transit. That was good. That was good. Um, OK. So Mercury is going to be getting lower night by night after the 17th, but Venus is getting higher. And on the 28th, the two planets will be very close together with Mercury to the left of Venus, but a lot fainter. Uh, Venus, she's such a show off, isn't she? You've seen it twice this week. Oh, Michael, I'm jaloux. Uh, John says, Chinese Long March 5 rocket should re-enter in the next couple of days, but at present it's forecast to be over the Pacific, not the UK. Imagine the weather forecast where they're sticking the... They don't stick the icons on anymore. That was like ended in the 1985. <laughs> Michael Fish will be there sticking on his little magnetic clouds and also rocket parts. <laughs> okay, so we are now going to go over to Liam. Oh, I've got a name for you. That's it. Liam. Liam, hi. Hello. Liam, <laughs> Liam Kennedy Space Center. 
Union <laughs> Center. There we go. Yeah, it is always a bit embarrassing when I show up at Kennedy Space Center and, uh, you know, being checked in through visitors and say, hi, I'm Liam Kennedy. This is my Space Center. <laughs> Uh, that would be good, wouldn't it? I'd be even more friendly with you if you owned a space centre, Liam. <laughs> and they say, "Do you really? Uh, are you really related to uh, Mr. Kennedy?" And uh, and I say, "Well, yeah, vaguely." I, I sort of make up a, a, a legend story in our family that somehow related to the actual Kennedys. I'm uh, the brother but... that time forgot. <laughs> yeah. But we get a, get away with it by saying not actually through the name Kennedy, it's through a paternal grandparent. So anyway, that's the true <laughs> legend that's in our <laughs> that's in our family lore. But anyway. is it? Is that real? For real? Well, the the story is real. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, totally nuts. I, I think someone just made it up. It's a good thing. To... <laughs> oh, that's all right then. So just because mm. we've got a, a lot of new viewers, Liam, give us a little bit of background about who you are and where you are, please. Oh, sure. Yes, because people are probably understanding that you sound sort of English. You know, with my accent, but uh, then ever again, I'll say something that says he's not from around here anymore. Yeah, I can't. I, I live in California now. I grew up uh, in a little town called Haverhill, uh, south of Cambridge, and uh, moved over here with my family in 1994. Um, and what I do now is I've always been with um, a, a lot of astronomy study president of Orange County Astronomers here in Southern California. So I have my Mead LX200, now 30 years old, uh, in my garage over here. And uh, uh, But throughout all of that period, I did a lot of public outreach. I used to be a planarium lecturer at the Griffith Observatory, which is the big in LA. And through all of that, I always did a lot of public outreach and whenever the space station was going by, uh, it turned into one of the, the, the most uh, happy, joyous events for everyone who were there. So years ago, I took it upon myself to create a cool little gadget that my grandkids, uh, and by the way, I have five grandkids in the UK, and son over here, and I created this gadget called the ISS Above, and this is it. It's really a Raspberry Pi. Um, but it has a, a little LED that lights up every time the space station is passing by. So it does that. Yeah. But it also displays a whole bunch of, of inf information about the space station. If I just switch uh, over to the screen here, you'll actually see some of the information. So uh, Vicky, this, is, this ISS above thinks it's uh, in Anglesey. So you can see there is a super bright visible path of the space station coming up for you tomorrow morning at a very um you know lovely time of the day it's only at 4 a.m <laughs> i'll be up for that for sure screaming and waving go. at the sky yeah so so what i'm showing you here is the info that comes from the iss above when you plug it into a tv so it shows who's up in space right now uh, there's only seven people now. Um, what's with that? Just a few days ago, there were 11. And obviously that's because uh, four of them uh, that were up there. Oh, it's also giving some uh, info on the news there. But uh, let me show you. That's where the space station is right now. So it's currently in a in a period of its uh, orbit sequences where it's it's in darkness right now and uh, you won't get to see it until uh, later on in the night. But just to give you a, a cool little thing, this is my, um, this is a calendar that shows all of the passes over Anglesey, as you can see oh, there. Lovely. And this is one of the reasons why I am so jealous of uh, everyone in the UK, apart from the fact the weather might not be all that good, so maybe you can't see this anyway, 
but because <laughs> you're so you the uh the UK is right at the peak of the space station's orbital extent going uh as far north as it gets is about 52 degrees um you get to see some of the most spectacular visible passes um and it's not like that for for me uh, we do still see some very good visible passes, but you actually have three visible passes in one night. Um, Ooh. And you can see at the moment there's visible passes. Uh, there's a really bright one just before sunrise at 5 a.m. Uh, that was that was yesterday. Okay, so today is the one that's at 4 a.m. Um, but you can see, just look at that. When I look at that, that's uh, that just brings happiness to my... Uh, to my thoughts that uh, there's opportunities there to see them. And, you know, if you're up uh, capturing the Cat's Eye Nebula, um, you know, if you're doing that through the night and the sky is clear, uh, you may get some, you may get multiple passes of the space station while, uh, while you're doing those activities. So it's a good thing to do while you're, uh, you're up for doing that. Anyhow, that's... Uh, that's a little bit about the space station, and uh, if I just switch my background here, so it's not got the ISS there. But that's just one of the things that uh, that I do. So, so I've positioned myself over seven years to sort of really uh, work in this whole area of uh, outreach related to the space station. Um, you know, my first ISS above was a Kickstarter and i shipped a bunch of them to the uk so there's now over three and a half thousand around the world and by far the largest group outside the usa are in the uk and they're in some schools uh in the uk which i always love but also lots of people who are interested in raspberry pi stuff uh they can get the download image and um write it to their micro SD card and you have your ISS above running on that Raspberry Pi that otherwise might be sitting in a drawer somewhere gathering dust not because um, you're not doing anything with others but usually people with Raspberry Pis have like a dozen of them and one of them will be <laughs> in the drawer sort of waiting for the next project oh that's great anyhow so that's that's one way to do it um, and uh, yeah so the other part that I haven't shared with you that that probably represents um, where I get them, you know, one of the major parts of enjoyment about following the space station is that there are live uh, views of the Earth being streamed 24-7 from the space station. And uh, that uh, video stream is available to anyone to watch. And... Uh, the video stream really only shows things when the space station is in daylight. And if you have an ISS above, it automatically starts up the live video feed whenever the station is in daylight, wherever that is. And I, I think in a minute, uh, Vicky, uh, I might be sharing a few pre-recorded segments of video um, that uh, will end up being the the quick contest for who can guess um, where this live video feed was being captured. Now, so, um, just before you carry on, yesterday mm. me and you were at a seminar, um, an online seminar about the importance of younger people seeing these images and how mm. profound the, the perspective that it changes of their planet. Uh, what Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, what this is about is um, that group, it's called the Overview Roundtable, and it's founded by the author of a book called The Overview Effect. Uh, his name is Frank White. And many years ago, uh, Frank determined that there was something that happened to people when they uh, get to view the Earth from space. And um, uh, that was he coined the term overview effect and it's since been something that has really um, been solidified as an actual effect uh, there are now countless uh, interviews with astronauts who've had this experience and it's where uh, you get an opportunity to somewhat shift your perspective of who humanity is 
when you get to see yourself from space. And to some extent, you know, we had a little bit of that uh, when that uh, Earthrise photo was released from Apollo 8, when the, um, when the, 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 the spacecraft, um, Apollo 8 was going around the limb of the moon and uh, uh, they captured this iconic image of the Earth in its entirety and all the people on it um, being seen from such a vantage point. Well, you know, the, the, the part that's available now is, well, okay, do you have to be one of those 500 or so astronauts to be able to have this experience? Um, you know, I would say no. I would say that there's a way that you can get uh, students, get regular people like you, everyone who's listening here, really connected with the Earth from an orbital perspective. Uh, that's an orbital perspective is actually a book by astronaut Ron, Ron Guerin. Um, I recommend that too. Uh, he's one of those astronauts that had the overview effect and is now uh, doing a lot of work to bring his new perspective on the world to everyone on the world. Um, but those, uh, the capability now is that in real time, uh, when the space station is in daylight, you get to see the Earth from space, um, not quite at the high resolution that, you know, your actual eyes would if you were on the space station. But nevertheless, it's something that provides a really unique way of viewing our Earth in real time. So if I just have a look at my data here, I'm just going to bring this up behind. Wrong one there. Let me bring this up one up behind me. So it's sunrise in one minute and 27 seconds, if I just get myself out the way. So yeah, in one minute and 20 seconds or so, uh, the live video feed on the space station, I can start playing that. At, at that moment, though, it's going to be um, just coming out of sunrise. So it'll be a few minutes after that until we actually see the live video feed. I can definitely, though, however, share uh, some examples um, of what that looks like. So I, I'm actually just going to show you one that and tell you what it is. So this isn't part of the, um, the actual um, uh, test, but this is actually my neighborhood. Uh, this is Southern California. And what you're seeing here is the San Diego is on the far left of the screen there. And uh, that blob of that lake there is something called the Salton Sea, which is not a place you want to get close to because it stinks to high heaven. Um, it's <laughs> known for, uh, you know, the, it will knock you out with how bad the smell is there. But this is oh. showing, so Southern California going into Arizona, um, the sort of lake that you can see that's going up the almost the center of the screen right now, that is Lake Havasu. Uh, it, Las Vegas is uh, is a little bit further above the the screen here, um, but you can see you know very clearly um, identifiable uh, geographic um, uh, views of of the Earth from space, and and just to give you another view of uh, of something that I I loved when when I captured this one. So, you know, what does a city look like from space? This is a very appropriate one that I'm about to show you because it happens to be the home of, mich of the main mission control for the International Space Station uh, that I've had the opportunity to visit many times uh, since 2015. And uh, it's just coming up, um, I think, uh, yep, just in, just in a second. And you will see, does anyone know what city that might be? <laughs> I'm Pasadena. sure there are. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is what Houston looks like from 260 miles above. Oh uh, my God. Houston is a pretty huge city. Uh, very clear to see. But by the way, this video, it's about 140 miles across by maybe 70 miles up, maybe 60 miles. Um, but uh, Johnson Space Center is virtually at the center of the screen right now, just a little bit up from center. Um, 
But the key thing about all of this is that while that's going on, many of those astronauts that are on the space station while this was being captured, that's their home. That's home from space. Wow. Um, anyhow, I thought I'd just, <laughs> just sort it. of uh, bring that in to, to, to give you some uh, view of, of what that overview effect can be like. Oh, yeah. And, you know, lots of things to, to look at. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly look for when the live video feed comes on. And right. I can uh, show that here. But, right. Yeah. Okay, well, it's time to play. We've got several games for you this evening, oh, so cool. please feel free to join in. Uh, we're going to have Cosmo's guessing game coming up in a minute. He has been really very far away. Uh, Liam's a little bit closer to home. You're going to show us some images, and the first person to answer correctly in the chat room wins a year aboard the ISS with three years of hard training, fully inclusive with the prize. So quite the astonishing prize, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And just let you know, I'm not providing that prize. So I'm just astonished that Vicky, I'm just so, so inspired that you've been able to secure that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, wow. Oh, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise is going on the ISS, isn't he? Uh, yes. Um, I haven't heard the full details, you know, confirming the detail of that other than yes. Um, the news is that uh, he would be going up on a SpaceX rocket uh, through the organization called Axiom Space, who are right. building their own commercial add-on to the International Space Station. But like an they, extension, also, like a garage yeah, extension. A whole extension, huge extension. Um, uh, but also what's happening before then is that uh, um, uh, the next... Soyuz flight, or very soon, there will be a launch of a Russian actress oh. onto the International Space Station. So it looks like the Russians have won up um, the the U.S. as far as what's going on, and that is something. Although we may only have just heard about it, it's actually something that's been in the in the crew launch schedule for some time. So it's it's not necessarily a surprise that this is going on, but it sounds like it's uh, it's actually a uh, a competition that where the winner is going to be this actress uh, from Russia going up. So Well it is it, um Lamia says, "Hi Lamia, I don't recognize you on here, but welcome to the show. Please come back regularly." Um it is Mission Impossible, isn't it, Liam? Yeah, I do believe it is something to do with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe the plan with Tom Cruise is that he'd be going up himself and and with another uh, uh, member of the crew. And I'm not sure if that member is going to be the director producer. Um, you, you know, there's th there's some issues with actually having astronauts, um, active astronauts being involved in um, a film. Um, that the most recent one where you'll see astronauts uh, acting in that way uh, was a VR experience that you can now get. So if you have an Oculus uh, platform, one of those VR goggles, um, you can now purchase for like $3.299 or something like that uh, some VR experiences that were filmed on, on a very special VR camera inside the station. But the key for the astronauts is they were coached on how to um, work with this camera as if it is a member of the crew. So if you experience oh, this right. VR program, you're essentially included and, and uh, they react to you as if you are right beside them. So it's not like you're necessarily just wow. a, an observer. Uh, you're a, li a little bit more of a spooky type of observer because, uh, you know, you're involved in the in the interaction. So that's you, amazing. You can, have, you, you can have lunch with them, dinner with them, uh, you know, be alongside them as they're doing some of the experiments. Do you get to use a space toilet? That's what everyone yeah, wants yeah. to see, isn't it? <laughs> they stick you in the space toilet. <laughs> I don't think a 360 version of that space toilet would. Although I tell you, all the students that I present to, they, you know, one of the favorite things to talk about is uh, the toilet uh, arrangement, especially with recycling your pee. So yesterday's. Yesterday's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. 
and uh, and then they get really really uh, ewy when they understand that um, it's not like your own pee that you that's been recycled that you're drinking it's everybody's oh, what a delicious cup <laughs> and, and I, I asked them how many people you know how many of you want to be an astronaut and you know quite a few hands go up and then after the story about how you know uh, P is recycled I then ask how many now want to be an astronaut and then <laughs> far fewer <laughs> You know, I had to Google Google the other day, Liam, why, you know, when your water's been left in the mug or the glass and it has mm. that kind of like really noxious odour to it, I can't imagine what it must be like a hundred times around the astronauts. Yeah, so this is the, the curious thing about that is that there are two independent recycling, uh, water recycling systems on the station. One of them takes out moisture from the air and, you know, um, recycles that in terms of filtration, and there is lit there's a place where you can get water that's come out of the air. Um, then there is the version that works off recycled urine. And the question that was asked of Scott Kelly one time, um, in fact, I, I guess, yeah, it was by me. <laughs> I was, I was uh, with Scott Kelly in a, in a bar in uh, just outside Johnson Space Center. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, OK, so which of those two tastes better which of those two um and i i when i'm presenting to students i ask them which would you want to be the 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 water that tastes nicer and that you'd rather drink and everyone says yeah of course the version that isn't from p um scott kelly uh confirmed that uh he absolutely does not like drinking from the the, the spigot that delivers water recycled from the air. What a word. The, the, yeah, the spigot. <laughs> anyway, and I'm not sure if that's an official term. I just made up um, in relation to the <laughs> space station. But apparently, no. The, the urine recycled is uh, cleaner than anything that you can get from, you know, your, your tap, your tap water. Um, it's cleaner than anything that comes out of the municipal water system. Um, oh, no. so, and they recycle about 90 to 95% of their water. And uh, they actually can create water from electrolysis. Um, oh, sorry, oxygen comes from electrolysis. But uh, they do get resupplies uh, with new water. Um, but it's not it's not as much as you might think. So it's one of the amazing things that has been done um, amazingly through work on the space station. So this is disappeared then. Okay, Liam, let's have your um, it's time for the guessing game now with the time geography the guessing quiz. Game. All right, so yeah. I'll switch this off from from the live video feed, which is currently okay. Over We're going to go full screen. Full screen. Yes. Um, so, all right. There we so go. I'm gonna be Right, so here is the first one um, that I will be showing. So, and I guess who's going to be first to guess where we are? Yeah, this was captured yesterday. Um, actually, it was really late uh, night time, my time. But uh, I now, can you out... can you pause this one, Liam? I can pause it. Yes. When it gets to the main bit, first. and let people just have a look down when it gets to the. Um... Oh, okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll keep it going just just for the moment. But yeah, so um, don't give too big a clue now. Let them have a look at it first. Clue. I won't give too big a clue. In fact, no clue to begin with. No clue at all. Okay, I will give no cl clue. I'm I'm beside myself trying not to give give the game away. Uh, so I'll pause it there. I think. Yeah. Because that that may give um, the the most opportunity for someone to sort of think where that might be. Um, and should we start? I'm not following the the messages that might be okay. on Facebook right now. Okay, there's none, none just yet. Well, we need to give um, a, a, a general clue to begin with, really. So general rather than the obvious clue. one that helped me guess. Yeah, <laughs> right. General clue. Um, it's a very a important, very important area, isn't it? It is a very important area for commerce. Worldwide commerce might have something to do with where this is. Uh, I'm not sure if that's too obvious a clue. 
<laughs> Go on, okay. let's have the next clue then, Liam. Yeah, and there might have been uh, an object in uh, in this view uh, some weeks ago that was uh, in the worldwide news as far as uh, how it inconvenienced the world. In fact, some of you may have had some uh, some Amazon packages delayed extraordinarily. <laughs> oh, they've all got it right. Everyone's got it right. John Murrell was my first in my inbox. Top of the Red Sea where the container ship was stuck. Well yeah, done, John. That is exactly it. <laughs> well Great done. Bitter Lake, John has put. No, I'm sorry, John. You got it right then wrong. So unfortunately, John is right then wrong. It's cancelled itself out. Uh, Wendy oh, was next on the <laughs> Wendy was next on the list with the Suez Canal. Yeah, well, that is certainly it. The Suez, if I just go back a uh, go back a few seconds. Uh, here we go. Nope, nope. Um, yeah, the Suez Canal is so the bit that's blocking the 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 top right portion of the screen there. That's on the space station. The Suez Canal is is like just right uh, to the lower left of, uh, and Suez itself is right to the lower left of that uh, big obstruction in that's blocking a, a bit of our view there. Um, by the way, yeah, you might be wondering: Are the pyramids visible here? Unfortunately, on this pass, they were just below the bottom uh, of the center of the screen there. So we just missed it by um, just a few miles. And you can't, at this scale, you can't really pick out the, the pyramids. But, but obviously, with astronaut photography, when they get to use um, a big zoom lens, which they have at many access to on the space station, they can see the um, the actual uh, pyramids from space through that. Do you want me cool. to show you another one, another guessing game? Yes, please. We're loving oh. it. Thank you, Liam. Okay, so here we go. I will just so. Here we go. It starts off a little bit obscure as to as to where this one might be, but uh, we'll see how quickly uh, everyone here gets what's going on. Um, oh, great! Thanks, John, for the uh, for that little bit of geography there. And that's exactly what uh, what I want people to be able to do is to take these live views and then to really drill down to what is actually being seen. Is anyone getting this? Uh, so far oh this is a new it. one now isn't it oh yeah. mm -hmm. uh yeah. let's have a look oh pause it pause it quick stop <laughs> pause it pause it quick okay stop. sorry <laughs> there we go oh we should have done it little bit by bit so where is that mm -hmm. let's see who's going to be the first person and I'm so sorry, John, for humiliating you, giving you a point, then removing it. So now I'll just give you 10 points and let's call the whole thing off. True. It should be like Q. Is that the one where they, they seem to just make up the, the game? The Oh, like QI? The, yeah, QI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just have arbitrary points. <laughs> well, they all points. make up points and people end up with minus 100 and, and things like that. <laughs> oh, look, they've all got it. Let's have a look. So, wow, gosh, how many comments? Uh, mm. Colin Pryor was the first answer. Um, well done, Colin. Well done, Colin. Yeah, this was, uh, you know, my memory of England and UK, Wales, is that having clear days like this from the west to the east is mm. like, wow, this is, everyone should have gone out and got the, the lottery tickets or something, but this is incredible. <sighs> Uh, one of my grandchildren lives right down in Bristol, which is just past center of the screen there. Um, yeah, beautiful view of of the silt coming from the River Severn. Um, and if you're very um, keen in your note on your noticing, notice the clouds, the the streams of clouds. You can actually get a parallax effect. You'll see that. Uh, oh, I see are, it. Yeah. Uh, so here's obviously London and the River Thames and. Uh, Oh, there you go. That was that was that for that one. Should I quickly move on to another one? Yes, There's please one, do, one, Liam. One more final, um, and uh, this Ooh. is going to start off very tough to sort of really figure out what this may be, um, and uh, we'll see how quickly someone gets it. These you know, because the thing about. Uh, the the live views from the space station is they this is the orientation of this is uh based around you know where 
where the station is in its orbit. So it's not, you know, going east. It's not going directly east to west. It's uh, it's it's going somewhere in between. So, um, you know, you've got to twist your head around the classic view uh, many times. The classic view of, of I know uh, where it is. <laughs> there you go. Vicky, hey. Vicky gets uh, gets ten points. <laughs> oh, no one else has got it. Come no on. No one else has got it. Yeah, this is, you know, this is, uh, if you've gone holidaying here, it may be something that you, oh. you'd sort of really get where it is. Mm -mm. They, there you go. I think someone someone came up with the general region of where it is. Yeah. So, uh, Dave, if I can say Dave is the winner there, if, if Dave <laughs> yeah. is the first one to put that up there. Yeah, well that done. is going right the way down the the east coast of Italy. Um, so that's the Aegean on the other side of it there. And, you know, just uh, really beautiful views. Uh, I, and that was actually on the same pass that I showed you the clip from uh, when it was passing over Egypt and the Suez Canal. Nice, nice. So, and just above there, just on the top of the screen now, that's uh, Greece, of course. And uh, heading into, if I just skip along just a second, although this might be too far. Um, try and bring up. That is one of the major uh, Mediterranean islands there down in the lower portion but you can see the clouds are just they are just phenomenal um you know the intricacies of some of the cloud formations it uh, it really does make up sometimes for the fact that you're not seeing a clear view of the the earth um but uh, nevertheless i just i just mm. love these views and they are available and if you, if I could share my screen, I share a little link to allow everyone to view this kind of thing along with a tracker. It's actually something that. Ooh, Liam, you're really starting to break up a little bit, my love. Um, in fact, you've nearly Sorry almost gone. Yeah, I, I think um, I'm going to. It's tight. Ooh. So, Liam, I'm going to move on to the next feature now. And thank you so much for appearing with us. It's been a little bit choppy, unfortunately. And thank you for the exquisite views, your amazing ISS knowledge. And feel free to go and join the chat and post your links in the chat room. Will do. Okay. All right. Hey. Thanks See all. you soon. Nice spend, spend some time bye. with you. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye. Thank you. Oh, I just love that. It's just so exciting. Everything that Liam says is just like, oh. Um, the closest thing I've ever had to the overview effect was um, Luke Jerram, who did Museum of the Moon, has done the Gaia sculpture, which is a giant planet Earth that hangs up in cathedrals. I think we looked at it for four hours and it gives you this mesmerizing, zoned out, blissful feeling. Um, it must be very similar to the overview effect without losing bone density. So, OK, um, we are now going to go over to oh, 10 comments. What's happened here? Thanks. Lovely to see you, Liam. Oh, Liam, you're so popular. Thank you so much. They all love you. Uh, oh, there we go. And he's posted the link to the web tracker. There we go. I know. It's so good. We've Liam is the guest we've had on most because he's just, just so wonderful. So uh, thank you for that, Liam. Cheers. Amazing images. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm sure if you want to buy Liam's technology, it is very readily available to you. So, okay, we are going to go over to Cosmo and then we've got Eleni. Poor Eleni's been sat there for ages. She's been sat there for 20 minutes. I'm sorry, but Cosmo comes first, Eleni, and you should know that by now. Um, right, so we are now going to do this. Cosmo's theme tune. Here it comes. Hang on, here we go. He's been flying around the solar system or maybe a bit further. But to the casual observer, he's a mithering, pestering sloth. Where have you been to this week, Cosmo? Cosmo, where have you been? Three clues. Only answer after the clues. Cosmo over and out. Okay, popular astronomers, you have been doing a fantastic job um, guessing 
the ISS location, but now Cosmo's been a lot further away than a couple of hundred miles up. So, okay, here we go. Now, ah, uh, yeah, so the way this one works, a little bit different from the last one, terms and conditions apply. We're going to read out three clues. Wait until I've read them all out to give everybody a fair chance of answering because it's to tax your brain cells. So, Cosmo, where have you been? He's been so far away. This might, I think, be the furthest away he's been, actually. Has he been to Andromeda? He's been far this time. OK, so this pair of objects have been known since ancient times by indigenous people from, here's your clue, South America and Africa and from the first millennium in Western Asia. The first preserved mention of these objects is believed to be found in petroglyphs glyphs, and in rock drawings found in Chile. So these two objects have been known for long ago. Clue number two, Cosmo. Observation and the how do you are very good at knowing all these facts, Cosmo? It's just like you've cut and pasted off Wikipedia. You're a very knowledgeable little sloth. Observation and theoretical evidence suggest that these objects have both been greatly distorted by tidal interaction with the Milky Way as they travel close to us. The larger of the pair maintains a very clear spiral structure in radio telescope images of neutral hydrogen. Wow, what could it be? And finally, get ready to answer. Measurements with the Hubble Space Telescope announced in 2006 suggest that these objects may be moving too fast to be long-term companions of the Milky Way. If they are in orbit, that orbit takes at least 4 billion years. Cosmo, that's too long. They are possibly on a first approach and we are witnessing the start of a galactic merger. So where do you think Cosmo has been to? First one to answer. Let's have a look at the comments. Ooh. Wendy, well done. Well done. I'd love to see them. Have you seen them? I've not seen them. Cosmo has seen them. He's actually been to them. He's the only one here who's been to them. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. The Magellanic clouds uh, are two irregular galaxies visible in the southern celestial hemisphere. They are members of the local group and are orbiting the Milky Way. Both show signs of a bar structure and they are often reclassified as Magellanic spiral galaxies. So now you know. Well done, everybody. Right, Cosmo will be back next week. He's just flown away somewhere else. I promise I didn't just throw him at the wall. Okay. Um, well done. Eleni also got it right in the private chat there. Um, they're behind you. Oh, yeah. Where are they? The, the, the backdrop, the cosmic microwave backdrop. It's got spelling mistakes on it. The large Magellan cloud. Now... OK, I thought I'd introduce a little bit of music to the show and give everybody their own theme tunes because it turns out I can make music. I used to work in radio, what, 10, 15 years ago, and it was my job to make music. But I've discovered I can actually do it on my computer now and it's opened up a whole new world of musical tomfoolery. So, oh, where's Eleni? We're going to put you on in three, two, one, Eleni. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are you? You have been so patient. So I like to come into the, the room from the start of the show oh, because I find right, it then. easier to watch the show from here rather than like having to like watching it on my phone and then have to quickly change to here. So don't worry, you're not like exhausting my patience or anything like that. Oh, that's all right then, because I'm like, if I was, it's <laughs> no, like you're no, sat no. on hold. <laughs> no, I was actually working on my code, and while Liam was talking, I I got it to work. So, if anything, help with productivity. Oh, that's good. Now, are you ready for your song, Eleni? I am. I really can't <laughs> wait to hear it. Well, it's it's quite amusing, and um, it was inspired by the things that you told me that you like. Okay, are you uh, ready for see. it? I am. <laughs> let's, let's see. Bring it on. Oh, okay. I hope you like it. <laughs> Here she is with the space news. It's Eleni. It's Eleni. Prepare to be astonished by Eleni. By Eleni. When she's not reading Tolkien or teaching a class, she's doing yoga and toning up a PowerPoint presentation for astronomer annulation. that <laughs> i loved it <laughs> how was that all right that was amazing <laughs> oh 
sorry. That was so good. Oh, that was so good. Does it sum you up nicely? It does. It does sum me up pretty nicely. <laughs> oh, that, that made me laugh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it for you again when you finish. Okay. <laughs> Right. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let you carry on now with the space news. Perfect. Oh, let's get you. Let's get ready. You ready with your solo layout, and then I'll put your PowerPoint on as well. Right. There she is. Okay. And let me. Um, One day I will remember that on the first go. Ah, oh, there we go. And I'll remember how to do my job as well. It's complex. <laughs> oh no! I... Hang on. Hang on a minute. Right. Let me have a think. I need to go solo layout. Remove. Good to go now. Are we, are we good? Yeah, go for it. Perfect. So I've got a few things for tonight um, all over the place, or should I say all over the universe. Uh, and I will start off with uh, an interesting um, emission from Venus's atmosphere. So it turns out it emits in radio. And what happened really was that the Parker Solar Probe swung by Venus uh, on its um, third flyby um, because it's using um, Venus's uh, um, gravity to get closer to the sun. Um, and while it was doing that, it detected a natural radio signal. So a team in um, Maryland analyzed that signal and, and they realized that um, they got the signal, or the, the probe read the signal, because it actually went through the upper layer of Venus's atmosphere. Um, so this is the first direct measurement of uh, Venus's upper atmosphere in 30 years. So it's been a very long time since um, an actual measurement has been made uh, with regards to the Venusian atmosphere. Um, so the, the flyby um, occurred at about, or rather the, the passing through the atmosphere, I should say, occurred at about 800 kilometers above the surface of the planet, um, which means that the probe actually skimmed through the um, ionosphere of Venus. Now, the ionosphere is this uh, top layer of the atmosphere of a planet. We have it too. The Earth has it as well. Um, and it's, um, it's basically where all the uh, gas is, being, um, esca is escaping from um, the Earth's gravity out into space. And it's uh, also the stuff that gets uh, really heated by solar winds. Um, so what this measurement shows, which is really interesting, is that um, the atmosphere or rather the ionosphere of Venus has actually um, thinned compared to 30 years ago. And this um, could mean that the uh, Venusian ionosphere actually responds uh, very sensitively to uh, solar winds and the sun's uh, cycles because the last measurement was during a solar maximum and this measurement, which was last year, uh, was during a solar minimum. Um, and this is actually a very, very strong indication um, that the ionosphere of Venus actually uh, de depends on, or rather the density of the ionosphere depends on uh, what the sun is doing, which kind of makes sense, I guess, in retrospect. Now, understanding this will help um, astronomers understand how a planet that is essentially, we call it the Earth's twin, because the, the two planets are very similar to one another, uh, how it could have such a different trajectory, how it could uh, evolve in such a different way. And if, um, if we understand that, we can also um, hopefully um, understand a little bit better what makes um, exoplanets habitable and not habitable, like starting from the same or similar initial conditions. Uh, so it was a very important uh, kind of like milestone measurement with regards to Venus. And now I'm going to take you from Venus, from the solar system, uh, to a completely different uh, part of the universe. 
and I'm going to take you 600 million light years away in the direction of the constellation Columba. So um, this particular uh, set of data um, from uh, Mercat, uh, it's the radio telescope here, um, reveals something really interesting. So what happens when you have a cluster of galaxies? Uh, you have a, a central galaxy and other galaxies around that central galaxy. And these galaxies interact with one another. And the space between the galaxies is filled with uh, intra um, or intercluster gas. Now, um, what the data showed was that um, right, sorry, just to clarify, this is the actual data and this is a simulation. Um, what it, it showed was that um, the jet that was emitted from the central galaxy in that cluster um, actually showed that T-shaped feature, like a boomerang kind of shape, or as they said in the um, actual paper, like a scythe. But I don't know, it looks like a boomerang to me, but never mind. They discovered it, so they can call it a scythe, I guess. Um, and this actually is a very good um, uh, way of mapping the uh, invisible magnetic fields of that intercluster uh, medium. So uh, bear in mind that medium is uh, probably hot and warm gas. And the fact that um, these jets respond to that gas means that they feel the magnetic field of that gas. So it's the first time um, that there is um, a clear sort of way of mapping uh, the interactions between galaxies via the intercluster uh, gas and also understanding the magnetic fields of that gas, which are otherwise really difficult to detect and analyze. Uh, the simulation agrees really well with the actual data, uh, which means that that actually could pave the way um, of looking for and understanding those invisible magnetic fields. So I thought that was pretty cool, and I hope it wasn't too technical, but I thought it was really nice. I really wanted to share um, with people. Um, and now I'm going to take you to space news and weather. And unfortunately, no auroras again. Uh, this is what the sun looked like today. Uh, it's completely blank. Um, it's a, how should we say it? Sunspot devoid. Um, and this is the fourth day in a row without any sunspots whatsoever. Uh, so it, it is known that this is the like end of a solar minimum. <coughs> Um, so th this this is about the start of the new solar cycle, but it, it looks like the solar cycle is struggling a little bit to come up and um, get the sun uh, spotty again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. Um, I, it's actually, I, I made that up on the spot, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so... Yeah, hopefully we will see something, maybe a sunspot later this week, but there is definitely more quiet days to follow. And until then, people will have to make do with some Aurora pictures from the web, I'm afraid. <laughs> and I will leave you with something really interesting. So on this day in space, in 1968, Neil Armstrong almost died. <laughs> Wow, so, I didn't know that. It's, it's insane, right? He narrowly escaped death while simulating a lunar landing. So that's him. And that's the lunar landing um, um, research vehicle, which was a simulator, essentially, a flying simulator. And there was apparently some uh, leaking propellant, and it caused a complete failure of the flight controls. Uh, so luckily, he managed to eject himself um, just above 30 feet above the ground uh, while the um, simulator crashed and burned. Wow. And he successfully went on to become the first person to walk on the moon a year later. So I thought that was um, a pretty interesting history tidbit to, to share with you today. 
And that's me for tonight. Oh, thank you so much, Eleni. And here's your song. And we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. See you next week. Bye. bye. Here she is with the space news. It's Eleni. It's Eleni. Prepare to be astonished by Eleni. By Eleni. When she's not reading, talking, or teaching a class, she's doing yoga and toning up a PowerPoint presentation. For astronomer annulation. Nice galaxies at the end of that, Eleni. Pretty cool. Yes, yeah. well done, Vicky. That was really good. Oh, thank you. Well, I've got two more songs to come in, but it's going to be a music show at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do Sonia's song and then I've got just another song. So, so many songs, but there we go. All right, catch you soon. Perfect. See you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye. Oh, clear off like that. There we go. I'm all on my own. I'm going to go straight over to Sonia. Here she is, my girl. Hello. Oh, I love seeing you on my screen. <laughs> I've just had um, a chocolate orange twirl. Oh, ah, they are back in the shops again. Ah, I oh. didn't, they didn't have any today, and I ended up buying um, knockoff stale chocolate peanuts. That was like the oh, they thing. had them in the Sainsbury's, and when I was filling up with fuel, I'm like, oh yes, get a couple Ooh. of those. Okay, right, I've got your theme song now, Sonia. <laughs> right, you've already had yours last week, didn't you? But you can have it again, though, where it is. Here it comes. Oh. Here's Sonia's song, because we know that you're going to give us... Um, halos. Halos. So, no, first of all, you're going to give us a halo presentation and then the weather, and then I've got a song about halos. So here we go. Oh, okay. Will it be cloudy? Will it be sunshine? Will there be hurricanes? Sonia's been checking out the jet stream and the humidity. Is it safe to get my telescope out or will it blow over and bend? Well, Sonia's here with all the answers, my starry-eyed astronomer friend. Uh, <laughs> next week, I'll play that. Next week, I'll play that after your presentation and before the weather. So um, what are you going to learn us about this week, Sonia? Sorry, I've got Katie here as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no leave the cat leave the cat on the screen because it's good it's good it's good um, <laughs> don't know if she'll stay still so um no no she's gone there we go <laughs> um so i thought because you mentioned halos last week i was like oh we could do halos we could do auroras we can do rainbows we could do arts sun dogs i thought oh this would be really good to get this presentation so i thought i'd do a bit of phenomena in nature so, what is optical phenomena? Phenomena. Do, 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 do. So, <laughs> I was just like, song just pops in my head now. So, uh, we're going to go through a few of these. So, we've got like supernatural arcs, we've got um, Sunbets Paris, we've got Upper Sun Caves Paris, we've got Tangent Arcs, we've got Sun Dogs known as Bahira. For Hillians, we've got sun pillars, we've got the 22 degrees halos, or Eli we've got everything, but we're not going to go through all of that today. We're going to go through the simple things that are quite easy to understand. So we shall do a next phenomena, please. <laughs> there we go. There wow, we go. I love these. I love them. Oh, I've never ever, I've, I've never, every time someone like posts a picture on Twitter or Facebook, there's an art, there's a halo. I look outside, it's like, no, I've not got a halo or a sun or a moon. It's like, ah. Oh. Uh. So, whenever you see a large ring around a halo, it's always a 22 degree halo. And so they're always known as a 22 degree halo because they look like that. So, um, if you saw a moon halo, there's a lot of Twitter photos of the moon halo on Sunday evening and sometimes it can mean there is rain soon and of course after we people posted the pictures on Sunday evening of the moon halos we had that horrendous weather on bank holiday Monday so there is oh. some truth behind that saying and um, because the high series clouds often come before a storm and when you notice in the photos the sky looks fairly clear um, as you know as you can see the sun on the moon but yet the halos are a sign of high um, thin series clouds are drifting at 20,000 feet or more above our heads, and that's what, what gives us the what, what gives the halos is those specific cirrus clouds in the sky. Um, even though it's still clear, we can still see those moon halos because of those cirrus clouds in the sky. 
um, and they contain millions and millions of tiny little ice crystals um, and they, they're caused by both refraction or the splitting of light, but reflection and glints of light from these ice crystals. And the ice crystals have to be orientated and, and positioned in such a way um, to, to how our eyes see it in order for the halo to, to appear uh, because of how these ice, ice crystals are against the cirrus clouds and how the lights reflect them and fact, that's what gives us that halo and that's how our eyes appear to see, see those halos as well. And so next a phenomena, please. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, I saw um, one so, of these. I saw a sun pillar last week. It was actually really good. Oh, I've never I've seen um I've seen sun pillar a few a few years ago. It was in that direction over there, um, where the sun sets, and it was looking directly upwards, and it's just so obvious to see it's because it's just this direct light that's just going going up. Um I've never ever seen sun dogs before. So if you look at how you get a halo, um, so the sun dogs are like two really, really bright, uh, look like rainbows on either side of the of the sun, and they're formed from hexagonal ice crystals in high and cold cirrus clouds, or during very cold weather. So you're more likely to see sun dogs in winter, um, as the ice crystals drifting in the air at a very low level. So you're more likely to see. Uh, sun dogs um, when the sun's um, going down in the winter time and so the crystal acts as the prisms and um, so if you think of a prism of how it bends the light rays passing through them that's more or less of how sun dogs appear through the ice crystals the ice crystals act like a prism um, and as the crystals sink through the air they become vertically aligned as you can see in that photo mm -hmm. so they act the sun that horizontally so that's how the sun dogs are are observed um with how the crystals are and how the sun rays are passing through the bent light. And that's why we see those sun dogs at those certain points um, in the sky. Um, and then the sun pillar or light pillar. So if you've ever seen those, if you look, especially when the sun is setting or just before the sun rises, it's, it's just a direct light that goes upwards um, from the sun itself. And it reflects off the surface of millions and millions of fallen ice crystals Again, associated with high, uh, thin, high level clouds, for example, cir cirrus stratus, or again, the cirrus clouds. And the ice crystals have roughly horizontal faces. And so they fall from uh, through the Earth's atmosphere, rocking slightly side to side. And that's what oh. gives us the pyramid uh, or the sun pillar. Um, you're, as you say, you mostly see these um, when the sun sets in the western, just before sunset or um, just before the sun is going to rise at, at the breaking of dawn as well. I've never, se I've never seen, a sun I'd love to see a sun dog, but this, if you get the chance to see a sun pillar, absolutely amazing, take a photo of it because you can see it so clear to see and so you can really notice it's a sun pillar in the sky. It's really, really good to see. Um, my <laughs> next slide now, the next phenomenon. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, lovely. A rainbow. So we've probably seen quite a few of these with the April showers that we've had um, in April at the moment. We've had some hefty hail storms. We've had some hefty hail showers. We've had some hefty rain. I know I come home last night and um, just as I messaged you, Vicky, saying, I'm going out back. <laughs> I just got home in time before the heavens opened and we got that hail storm last night. So um, rainbows develop when sunlight passes through falling raindrops. And as the light passes through the water, it undergoes um, a lot of scattering of light and there's the bounce off the particles in the water as so the light no longer takes a straight unpeded path um, as it's too intense it's too intense to of when it drops some of the light is then absorbed um, I think if you notice especially with a double rainbow um, the light has to pass through the droplet twice um, compared to single rainbow it's once and that's how we get a double rainbow with it being twice but if you notice with a double rainbow as well um, if you notice in the picture, um, the mirror of the rainbow is reflected. So the colours are actually reversed compared to the first bow. So as you see, you'll start off like the reds and the yellows, the greens, the purples. But on the second bow at the top, it's complete reverse. So you'll start with the purple and then you'll you'll go on into the blue. And that's it's absolutely reversed. And it's also a lot um, fainter as well because of its mirror image and the primary arcs and all of that and the, the if you if you never see, if you're new to rainbows and you've never seen a rainbow 
um always have this sun back to you um and oh so if, if the sun's behind you have look forward and that's where you see the sun of where it's raining as well and you'll get the rainbow and if you notice i don't know why it's always lighter underneath the rainbow as well for some reason and if you need to notice in specific photos as well sometimes you won't have a lightning bolt go into that um lighter part oh, of the yeah. rainbow as well it's sort of like just misses the inside of the rainbow. I don't know why that is, but a lot of photos seem I'm like, that's really good that I'm going to have to research that. So I find that absolutely Ooh. fascinating. Can a, light, can a rainbow get struck by lightning? <laughs> I know, I know. So, yes, it's always worth looking out for rainbows. Um, so a fog boat as well. I've never seen a fog boat. If you have seen a fog boat, please uh, let me know. Um, yeah. These are mostly found over water mainly, Um or in foggy areas, uh, when sunlight strikes tiny water droplets in the area of fog, you have to be in the right place at the right time. I've never been in the right place or the right time to see one of those. And as the fog droplets are small, there is no refraction, so they don't refract any light, and so the bows are white. Ooh, interesting. I just thought they were a bit anemic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we come into circumcenifil arcs. Um, these aren't rainbow they have nothing to do with rainbows these but i could not find anywhere what to put them in the presentation i thought i did look sort of like a rainbow so i thought i'd put them with the rainbows they are mainly formed of how sun dogs are um they, they appear very close to zenith especially when the sun is fairly low and um especially they, 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 they more or less appear when the same time as sun dogs appear and the center of bow is always sunwards and the red is on the outside but Ooh. they have no relation to rainbows whatsoever i thought because it looks like a rainbow but the the rainbow slideshow so there you go lovely <laughs> and so we come to the last phenomena page oh it's it nearly is nlc season not to lose a cloud season i have seen i've only ever seen this once in my lifetime i can't remember if it was last year or the year before but I was like, I'm so excited. I was like, oh my god, I don't think I slept that now. But like, Peter, Peter, get up, look, look, look. He wasn't <laughs> impressed at what time I showed him that. Um, <laughs> so yes, it is time nearly to start. I think it's like mid-May, um, the not too loose cloud season will start to August as we see the night shining clouds. I saw a fog in Normandy. Wow. If you have a photo yeah. of that, please show it me as I would love to see that. Yes, definitely. I Show me that. If I would love to see Lovely. that. Yes, please. Um, so not to close in clouds oh. are usually visible when the sun is just below the horizon. It's normally about an hour and a half, two hours um, after the sun has set or just before um, sunrise. I've never seen it before sunrise. I've only ever seen it when the sun sets. Um, so the sun is below the ground horizon, but the, the high altitude of not to loose clouds um the, the sun illuminates these specific clouds causing them to glow in the sky and then the in the mesosphere um so it's kind of like the really high clouds 50 miles above the surface and when the light gets to these clouds at a certain point of sunset that's why we get some wonderful night shining clouds and these nocticlucent clouds known as night clouds i'm looking forward to the season this year hopefully we'll get the weather to see it so it is to start to look out for them so make sure you do look sort of west um westish but i i usually find them sort of between east and west usually i don't know why they're not directly always where the sun sets they seem to be just just a bit right of where the sun sets for me at the moment um, and and then we have northern lights the aurora borealis um this is on my tick list this is on my bucket list peter knows this is on my bucket list when i was here to go on a cruise or to do something to see the northern lights iceland finland i don't care where we go i'm like peter we are going whether you like it or not um so the northern lights so when we get a really big is it a solar flare or solar prominence? And it bursts out the sun and it's coming towards a speed, 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 a million miles an hour. And it hits the um, the magnetic 
hemispheres or the polar regions of the earth and when it hits the earth it sort of like gets all this light i can't illustrate it as well as that lovely little um, image on there um but yeah so we get these solar prominences we get these sun flares first out of the sun they hit the earth and then we get these wonderful colors mm -hmm. of light in certain certain regions the polar regions um to see the northern lights yes mm -hmm. so there we go there is many more um lovely uh phenomena opta to see um if you go especially on to um noah um they will explain a lot of things even google things um some really nice photos and if anyone's got any photos please please post them on my facebook oh. tweet me. i would love to see them Jed Max just got your new career there. That would be I think I have, yes. Yes, I'm not sure about next week yet. I'm sure you'll give me some inspiration because all my presentations have come from Vicky's ideas. Ah, <laughs> so excellent. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Well, we'll have a little think and we'll do something, uh, maybe go a bit more in depth on Noctilus and Clouds, actually. We could do, yes, yes. And if anyone's, I could even do a presentation. If everyone's seen any, um, not to gruesome the sounds, send me the photos. I could do a little presentation of everyone's everyone's photos. Oh, okay. Even. Well, we'll come together. We'll chat in the weeks, Sonia. And you've definitely missed your calling as a teacher as well. <laughs> and a weather presenter. Yes, so we'll go on to the weather next. Um, okay. Oh, dear. What? <laughs> <laughs> this Thursday night where we're presenters aren't going very well for me at the moment. So especially this evening, um, it is going to be showers. It is going to be hit and miss, hail, thunder, you know, what we've had recently, um, especially um, Norfolk, um, North Wales, Central England. Um, if you are like South Wales, the South Coast, Bournemouth, um, maybe a touch of the South East, you probably will get the cloudy skies, but inland it's going to be cloudy. Um, so yeah, sunshine showers. Same for Scotland. Yes, you will get the snow, I'm afraid. More snow. I've seen some amazing snow pictures um, as well. I even saw um, the local weather presenter tonight on BBC Northwest. He was, he was showing people skiing in Lake District today as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not unusual for May. We can get it for May. We are still that, having that transitional period between spring and summer with, with how the sun is. You know, it's not warm. It's not cold. So we can get the variant of the temperatures. So everyone's like, oh, my God, snow in May. It isn't unusual. We can still get snow in May. I think because of the warm weather we got last year, people expect the same again this year. But it's not how the weather works, I'm afraid. Um, the same is... Ireland tonight, Northern Ireland, you're going to get rain and showers. The um, Southern Ireland, it does look like it's going to be a clear night tonight for everybody. Um, tomorrow night is looking the best at the moment. It is going to start, as we have seen um, at the moment, the showers heavy on the, can be heavy uh, sometimes. Um, however, we should by 10 o'clock expect some nice clear skies tomorrow. Maybe um, if you're in Scarborough, Whitby, you might just get a rain shower just past by. And on the western side of Scotland from Ed Edinburgh North, uh, northwards, you may get the rain and the snow. Um, Ireland, it is looking um, clear. Um, Northern Ireland. However, um, it is going to turn wet and windy again on Saturday, much like the bank holiday week, and it is just going to be a complete washout, I am afraid, at the moment. Um, Temperature-wise, it is slightly cold still for this time of year, maybe three or four degrees. Um, we could even go minus one for the dew point if you have got your telescopes out. Wind speed not looking uh, too bad at all, quite low on the surface, around four, four miles an hour. 30,000 feet it is going to be slightly higher, around 70 miles an hour, so that could do your seeing. Um, the astro index or the seeing conditions, because of those high winds and the amount of ice crystals and everything in the sky at the moment, we are going to have at least one, two degrees. It has just started raining here as well. Um, and then the transparency eight and the pickering, oh, the pickering is going to be between three and six at the moment because of those high winds up in there in the atmosphere and the and the serious clouds that we've got at the moment. Um, it isn't going to be very good seeing conditions, um, but it does look like the best night is going to be tomorrow night. And then as far as the weekend's concerned, it's not looking good, I'm afraid, at the moment. Uh, to have a quick look at the jet stream, I've not looked at the jet stream yet. I had all this ready. I had come home this evening, but other things had taken uh, 
control. It seems to have not done as many notes I had to. The jet stream, it, it looks to be, it's kind of like southern half of the UK, northern half of the UK, there's no jet stream, but the southern half, there is jet stream over us at the moment. So, as mm -hmm. I say, make the most of it tomorrow. Um, there's no point in me doing the weather forecast Saturday or Sundays. It's not looking great. Um, as we go through to next week, Sunday could be good. Um, maybe a few showers if you get whales. Um, no point in Ireland. Just forget it, Ireland. Sorry. Scotland, not looking too bad. But if you go like Edinburgh South, which you may get the odd shower. But it's not looking too bad on Monday night. But forget tomorrow. It's going to be wet. Not tomorrow. Sorry, I'm thinking it's Friday, aren't I? Forget um, Saturday, it's going to be much like Bank Holiday Monday, a complete washout for oh, everybody. No, sunny, high yeah. winds and high, wet, high rain, it is good. the temperatures are going to go up on um, Saturday, but we have got a low pressure coming in um, as well, even though the winds are coming up from the south as well, to still keep it bad for us. Bobbins, Sonia, Bobbins, but at least your smiley happy delivery more than makes up for the terrible weather. <laughs> You've got a fan club here, Sonia. You've got a good fan club here. Um, oh, thank you, everybody. Um, Mr. Fractal says you're his favourite, you're his favourite weather presenter. You're mine as oh, well. Barry, oh, sure. don't tell I wine. Oh, I know he's got a really big fan club I wine. I don't I can't, you know. <laughs> I don't be taking <laughs> over him now. <laughs> does I wine, does I wine know that you're doing the weather now? Um, I have no idea. Oh, you have to send him a clip. He's he's a chap that shows my um weather photos uh, when he does the weather. So I am greatly appreciate. He's a, I am a big fan of his just because he shows my photos. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, I every week now I'm going to be making a song about the space news, and to just get it kicked off, I asked Sonia what I should make a song about. The the topic was halos, and as it happens, there has been a very rare halo detected above Florida um, by a photographer, Lisa Brown. So she spotted the 22 degree halo, which is the kind of bog standard, ready salted halo around the sun. But then she used, I think, a fisheye lens to photograph the whole sky, and then she deeply 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 processed these images kind of like um you put them into negative and um if you go on the atmospheric optics facebook page she has laid out how she processed this mary mcintyre whose necklace i'm wearing is also a big halo watcher and you kind of do them in negative and it brings out these very 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 faint halos and the minute i saw this halo display on facebook i was like mm, that is very very special and what happened is that she photographed an arc now it's it's, it's blink and you miss it it's this tiny little v-shaped arc linked in with all the others and <clears throat> it's it was spotted in the cirrus clouds but it's so rare that it's only ever been spotted. I think it was only discovered like 10 years ago above a ski resort called Unasvara. Um, and it usually falls in the diamond dust generated by ski machines, snow machines. So it is a hyper rare thing. And sometimes some of these new arcs uh, in just even in the past couple of decades have been completely and utterly brand new. So if you ever see a sky display with a circumzenithal arc and any of the others that you get, turn around and look across the whole sky because you never know there could be something so rare that it will actually be named after you if you discover it, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> so Sonia said, Vicky, write a song about halos. And you know what? I have. So this is the final song for the evening. Where is it? I hope you like it. It's got subtitles so you can all sing along. And this is called The Halo Song. Cloud is high and hazy. Tip your head back and you may see a hazy halo around the sun. Please take pictures in case it's a one in a million sky display. The angels must have dropped a shipment of halos and scattered them across the sky, where they were picked up, photographed, and processed by Florida wildlife photographer Lisa Brown. Good work, girl. Now if you're into sky watching She captured something so rare A type of art called Unasvara It's only ever been caught in diamond dust above ski resorts But there are so many other exciting halos to look out
helpful, and you don't even have to be an expert. Sun pillar, sun dog, sub sun, par helix, par helix, circle, box inspector, and one. We all know seven colours of the rainbow. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And if that don't move you to look at the sky. Perhaps all these mathematically astonishing arts are the sky's way of smiling back at us. Blimey. Did I fulfill your brief there, Sonia? That was brilliant. You should do you should do an album when you've like when you've like done all you should like me so many songs and release them as an album. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you thank you yeah maybe yeah um i just need to learn how to produce the music properly but yeah uh send me a request alice shepherd our citizen science um officer at the spa has suggested something to do with irregular galaxies so i think that's my theme next week i need to find news about uh irregular galaxies i'm sure there is some because there's always news about irregular galaxies they're just like front page oh, news all I'm the time sure maybe maybe i'm sure eleni can give us some really good space news on irregular galaxies somewhere Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Tim. That's so kind. And I'll get it uploaded to um, YouTube and then you can watch them and learn them and sing along because humans learn quicker to music. And I always liken it to the shake and vac music. Um, we all remember that, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Oh, thank you, everybody, for those nice comments. That's lovely. Great stuff. Okay, well, Sonia, it's been such a lovely show. And um, to my co-stars, Eleni and Liam and you, you have made it such a wonderful, happy show. The comments are just so good. Everybody who's joined us this evening and everybody who's helped us, uh, it's just so delightful, everybody. I'm really feeling the love of the show. And my internet has held out. Ah! Ooh. There is one massive caveat coming up, and that is the school holidays. The school holidays are coming. The children eat the internet, and I might just have to take a hiatus because oh, I've, I've just got no plan B. You to eat the internet so the internet doesn't the, – the kids don't eat the internet. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, Ellen is here. That was – she's got a – she's got a – obviously got an alter ego. I don't know who Luthien Tinuviel is. No, I was like, who is that? <laughs> it's it's um, Sonia's uh, catfish alter ego. Not Sonia, Ellen is catfish alter ego. <laughs> 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 Naughty Eleni. Right, okay. Look, I'm sweating in my shell suit now. Right, I'm gonna go. <laughs> we love you. Thank you so much. Lots of love. Oh, you're welcome. I'll be back next week, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Bye. I'm gonna hit the off button now. Like, tag, share the video. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>